Oh goodness, what's this? Episode 2, Who Woulda Thunk It? Well, based on the typical structure of YouTube series, most people probably. Yes, we're back with more of that glorious Planet Coaster content, building a brand new theme park just outside Cardiff, Wales. If you missed last week's episode, as always, just go back and watch it, you lazy dingleberry. I can't be expected to do a full recap like this is flipping Netflix. Today we will be finishing the roadways, placing the spawn point and building the park entrance, so let's crack on. I squared off this area of the entrance with more pavement, ensuring to avoid any Zed fighting with overlapping pieces. <laughs> Zed fighting, what is this, Daisy? Our car park is obviously very flat, so I used this area to add some height variation. After smoothing it out, I fenced it off. Well, we wouldn't want any chance of fun to be had by any rogue juveniles. I added trees, rocks and foliage. I know, breathtaking. As most things in the UK are either dead or in the process of dying, I added some dried leaves to the ground. I don't want to alarm you, but this is potentially the last lot of pavement to be placed, so I recommend you savour it. Are you savouring it? Because you better be. Finally, I tied it all together with some terrain paint and road markings. Mmm, cohesion. For the last section of the car park, I allowed some space for outdoor storage. You'll find most parks have some sort of area close to the park entrance where you'll see old ride parts or random disused set pieces. I won't be populating this until we have a finished park and have an idea of what items park maintenance might have just abandoned here. I copied our stunning automated gate from last week and positioned it accordingly. I even transformed this one into an open version. I've really outdone myself here.
Good lord, are we actually building something of use? I'm not sure my heart can take it. As to not overwhelm ourselves too early, I decided to go with a simple toilet block. In typical Moomin fashion, this will house our spawn point. As you can see, it took a fair amount of fiddling to get everything to line up properly, but eventually I fit the toilets, spawn point, entrance gate and a staff room into this neat restroom shaped package. I buried a barrier into the wall to force the AI's pathing exactly where I wanted it and constructed my classic fire exit door. Let's talk aesthetics. I wanted to give the impression this was an existing public toilet that has been adapted by the park to match their branding. And what is our park's branding? Well, you'll just have to wait and see. I can't give everything away in episode 2, can I? Okay, well red will be a prominent colour, that much is clear. You know, cause the whole red dragon thing, yes we're going for cliches. Can you, can you hear that? Google is telling me about red deer now, I have no idea why. I didn't say anything to you. I created some advertising screens using TVs and hydro beams. Speaking of Hydro, I used his wonderful guttering to create some, well, guttering. As with all of my parks, realism is number one. I added some drainage and ventilation. In case you've been living under a rock, a glitch was recently discovered that allows you to rotate gridded pieces. I used this to turn a gloss tile wall into gloss tile flooring. No idea what I'm talking about? Here's a handy vid. You're welcome. I always like to create a seam between varying floor textures, so here's the usual metal tread plates. As previously mentioned, this is an old build, so Furana's dirt decals are a must. Can you imagine if everything was just written in English? The Welsh would have absolutely no clue where anything was. I began with a black background, but remembered this is a theme park, not a funeral parlour, so changed it to our very Welsh red.
When it comes to restrooms, you can never have too much airflow. And as boring as these details might be, they're what really sells a realistic build. Another facility you'll often find near the park entrance is a security office. I placed this up the far end next to our service road access. Hashtag logistics. I wanted this build to look like a copy of the existing architecture, but if it were built today. Same vibe, but cleaner. More signage, including the Welsh for security, which, let's be honest, is absurd. I added these default AF windows, but don't worry, I came back off camera to tart them up a bit. Time to connect our two builds like an elderly couple holding hands as they walk along a beach at sunset. Too poetic for some fencing? This seems like the perfect place for a bit more height variation. I created a raised bank and covered it in foliage. One of the many things the Welsh pride themselves on is the country's natural beauty, and so nature quickly becomes another defining feature of our park. I don't want to say it's already looking great, so if you can just leave a comment saying how it kinda looks great, that would be great. It's time folks, the construction of the park entrance has begun. If you need to pause the video to regain composure, I understand. For the gateway to our park, I wanted big, modern and glass fronted. I even had the audacity to go for a curved front, which definitely didn't cause me any headaches at all. To allow for total flexibility, I opted for Hydro's beams and plaster mixed with the in-game glass. Gridded items simply weren't an option.
This pitched and curved front was probably the most difficult thing I've ever tried to execute in-game, and probably out of game. I hope you can feel my frustration through this heavily edited time-lapse, but despite everything, I did pretty well. I did however decide to cover the seams regardless with pillars, although I later swapped these plaster ones for metal ones. With the fiddly bits done, it was a lot of copying and pasting to get the exact scale I was after. After covering the ground in my favourite Victorian tile, I started on some windows. The in-game windows always look terribly fake being stuck on the walls the way they are, so here I opted for some proper custom indented windows. Fancy, right? Before we continue detailing any further, I figured we should probably build out some more of the structure. Oh look, a floor! Gosh, terribly exciting. Our park entrance of course needs ticket offices for guests to never use. I created a cutout, a shutter using locomotive rails, a counter using art shapes, and some more signage. Here's a handy tip when it comes to pronouncing Welsh words. Don't. You will be wrong. I copied our external windows for internal ones. How's that for versatility? If you're wondering what's up there on the second floor, keep guessing. I'll never tell you. This is the first park I've ever used turnstiles in, simply because I don't like seeing guests walk through solid objects. Well with this lovely wheelchair gate, problem solved.
did you know console players are able to recolor this door? Outrageous, right? Well, look what I can do with art shapes. I was keen for our entrance to be bright and airy, so I added some chunky windows into the remaining walls. Adding little splashes of red throughout keeps the brand cohesion going. It's almost like I know what I'm talking about. Another facility? Am I flipping mental? Yes, and I desperately need help. With a few minor tweaks, this copy of our toilet block works wonderfully with very little effort. The Welsh translation of first aid is... <laughs> nice try. I'm not even going to attempt it. When I said the gable was the most difficult thing to build, nothing could prepare me for this roof. I won't tell you how long it took, but let's just say I'm now dead. To maintain the little sanity I have left, I took a break from the roof as the front of the build was looking very plain, so I added some wooden decor using pillars. even created little Diddy versions. How adorable. Back to my old nemesis, the roof. Well, just watch, okay? Revisiting it is quite traumatic. I decided on a giant skylight using much of the same materials from elsewhere. A little bit of fencing before we add some nighttime lighting. created some custom lampshades and hung them at varying heights and then created the emission using area lights. In 
enjoy the cinematics and I'll see you next time where we add our first coaster to the park. I know, it's a big deal, but I'll be there to hold your tiny hand. See you then.